Good evening, good evening, good evening. Just a little notice here. Welcome to Monday Night in the Psalms. Oops, I played the wrong one, but I won't be playing another one. I was actually looking for the one that has the, you know, my usual introduction, but we won't get into that right now. Tonight's Psalm is Psalm 57. Yay. Okay. I'm going to read from the King James Version, and then I'm going to read from my favorite translation. You all know is a passion translation. So let's start with the King James. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of the wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto the Lord Most High, unto God Most High, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that will swallow me up. Selah. And you all know that Selah means stop and think about that for a minute. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. My soul is among lions and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me in the midst whereof they are fallen themselves. Selah. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens and thy truth unto the clouds. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. Okay, let's look at the Passion Translation. Hallelujah. A feeling good already, I tell you. The Passion Translation, where is it? All right, let me look for it here. Hallelujah. What a God. Here we go. And you know, the, the, this, this psalm is actually what they refer to as King David's golden song of instruction composed when he hid from Saul in the cave. So the Passion Translation says, Please God, show me mercy. Open your grace fountain for me, for you are my soul's true shelter. I will hide beneath the shadow of your embrace under the wings of your cherubim until this terrible trouble is past. Hallelujah. This is me. I cry hallelujah for the one you cause. Trust me. I will cry out to you, the God of the highest heaven, the mighty God who performs all these wonders for me. From heaven, he will send a father's help to save me. He will trample down those who trample me pause in his presence. He will always show me love by his gracious and constant care. I am surrounded by these fierce and brutal men. They are like lions just wanting to tear me to shreds. Why might, must I continue to live among these seething terrorists, breathing out their angry threats and insults against me? Lord God, be exalted as you soar through the heavens. May your shining glory be seen in the skies. Let it be seen high above all the earth, for they have set a trap for me. Frantic fear has me overwhelmed, but look, the very trap they set for me has sprung shut upon themselves instead of me. Woo! Pause in its presence. 
My heart, O oh God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praises. Awake, O oh my soul, with the music of his splendor song. Arise, my soul, and sing his praises. My worship will awake on the dawn, greeting the daybreak with, daybreak with songs of praise. Wherever I go, I will thank you, my God. Among all the nations, they will hear my praise songs to you. Your love is so extravagant, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness so astonishing, it stretches to the sky. Lord God, be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens. May your shining glory be shown in the skies. Let it be seen high above all the earth. Let me tell you, is it just reading that psalm? <laughs> I can't begin to tell you what I'm going through right now, you know, but... And I didn't know until just a few hours ago that this was the psalm I'd be doing. But this is the Holy Spirit talking to me. So let's go through it verse by verse. Now this is David hiding from Saul in the cave. And he said, God, show me mercy. Open your grace fountain for me. For you are my soul's true shelter. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the King James Version. Not New King James. E, all right. Let me open another screen. All right. Yes. I want you to think about the challenges you are facing right now, right at this very moment. Is anything too big for God to handle? Ask yourself that. Because this is David hiding for his life. He says, be merciful unto me for my soul trusts in thee. You see, he's not of any doubt that God is going to show him mercy. He is not of any doubt that God will deliver him. Right now, I'm in a situation where it's only God can deliver me. But guess what? I am at peace because I believe he will deliver me. I believe that he has already gone into my timeline, saw that this was going to happen and made a preparation for it. So my soul trusts in him. And he says, in the shadow of your wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. So, you know, it reminds me of a time I was in the bush with my husband. And I had to hide in a cave from some men. And I tell people about this story and they don't believe that I was so calm because these men were actually planning to find me and violate me. But I sat in this cave and I listened to them talking. But I just sat on my palm pilot and I played Scrabble. Why? Because I knew that I would be delivered. I knew that my husband would come back and find me when he realized that I was not with him. I knew that God would speak to him. I knew that God would make him find me where I was because I was well hidden. Even the dogs ran past and never picked up my scent. But my husband, at the time, I had a particular scent. I loved to bathe with a vanilla body wash with chocolate syrup. I don't know why. I mean, they just love the smell. <laughs> so I used to mix the, the vanilla um, body wash with Hershey chocolate syrup. I mean, they just love it. The smell was heavenly. But my husband, in passing that cave, picked up the scent and came back for me. No, not only did that happen, the Lord put the fear of God upon these, or I should say put the fear of my husband upon these men. When it came to their thoughts and they were reasoning out whose woman I was and why I would have been, why would a woman be in the bush? And they said, well, there's only one man I know of Carrie's wife in the bush. And if it's that man, he will track you if you're even upon the moon. So let's not have this man after us. You see, it's all God's doing. What did I do in the meantime? I play Scrabble. 
okay? Because my soul trusted in God to get me out of this, okay? And I was in this mess because I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, okay? So I, I am like David. I just said, God, be merciful unto me because I trust you. And I just go and hide in you till these calamities be passed. Right. So even now in my current situation where I'm facing a certain kind of calamity, I am a hiding in God until these calamities be passed. He says, I will cry unto God most high, unto the God that performeth all things for me. Now, David have testimony, you know. Him test, he testify, he, he has a life of testimony of God performing great and wonderful things for him. So in the Passion Translation, it says, I will cry out to you, God of the highest heaven, the mighty God who performs all these wonders from me, for me, because from heaven, he will send a father's help to save me. Now, if you're a parent and your child cry out to you, tell me that you're not going to answer. Tell me that you're not going to just drop what you're doing because there's a certain cry from your child that tells you your child needs help. Even if your child is an adult, if that person calls you and says, mommy or daddy, I really need your help, you know, tell me that as a parent who loved the child that you are not going to drop everything to help them. This is what God does. He hears your cry. And you know, there. listen, children will cry for a lot of things, but there's that certain cry that makes you know, this is urgent, he needs my help right now, or she needs my help right now, I just have to drop everything and help. This is the God we serve. You cry out to him, you're the God who performs. Listen, God, you, you, you have taken me out of calamity after calamity. Some of my own doing some of circumstances, but you have helped me. Therefore, you have performed all these wondrous things for me. Why should I worry? Why should I stress myself? You know, there's a scripture that says in the Psalm, I think we did it already, Psalm 46. Why be downcast, O my soul? Hope thou in the Lord. He says, why are you disquieted within me? Just calm yourself and hope in the Lord. So when you're in this kind of trouble, any kind of trouble, anything that looks like a calamity to you, there is nothing that is too big for God to handle for you. He is God. That's why I named God. That's why I named God, you know, because he can do it. He is able, right? So when you consider Moses, in the in the wilderness, people are holler him down for meat. We want meat. We tie this bread from him. He say, "All right, God, you know, really, me want to feed six hundred thousand men and their families. Really, God, it's not me give birth to them, you know, and I'm literally get feisty with God. But what did God say? Is the hand of the Lord too short? In in the meantime, God did just divert some quail into the desert, right? Because they would be flying um, from the sea to come that way. Him just say, all right, on the land right there, so. And they had to obey. So meat is God enough for them to eat and choke on it. Okay? So so those who was dying for flesh, dead from flesh. God is a God who is willing to help us. Never think that you, okay, this is, you know, this is my own doing and I'm going to just get myself out of it. No, just confess and say, listen, Father, me mess up, you know. But God, I need your help because I cannot fix this. So far gone, I cannot fix it. But I know you're a merciful God. I know you're my Father. Send help. Right now, me saying it. Father, send help. Send help, God. Send help. You know what I need, Lord. And so when you think about this loving father, you know, sometimes we tend to, and God has been shown by many people, he's just a God waiting for you to mess up so he can just whop you, right? Another thing also, he's a God waiting on you to call out to him, 
to say, listen, God, show me mercy. <laughs> because I you me trust. Because <laughs> me can't trust myself. Show me mercy, God. And in the meantime, while you do that, I'm going to hide under your wing them till this trouble pass. Because I can't manage it. So here, me hiding, you deal with it. You know, like, you're, if you remember when you were little and you get in trouble and you hide behind your mother's skirt or you hide behind your father, your father leg because you know, say you're in trouble, but daddy is dear, so I'm going to sort it out for me, right? Even though you might get a chastising later, all right, you know, you did so and so. But I want to tell you, you know, the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn you. He will convict you. Don't convict me already. Sylvia, you should have done it this way. So next time you're faced with a situation like this, this is how you deal with it. And yeah, me repent. Me just hide in on them wings till him sort out my issues, right? And anything him tell me to do, I'm going to do it. So if him say, all right, go to this person and say X, Y, Z, me going to go to that person and say X, Y, Z, okay? So David goes on to say, from heaven, he will send a father's help to save me. He will trample on those who trample me because your father not going to stand by and watch nobody brutalize you. He's not going to do it, right? He's not going to do it. Call for help. Say, Daddy, um, a little help here. <laughs> and then you just go hide. Because you're done. Call for help. You know him going to answer. He's going to deal with those who brutalize you. And he will always show me love by his gracious and constant care. That's the God we serve. That's our Father in heaven. It never say, you see, this alone puts to lie that God is a judge waiting on you to slip up so he can beat you. This right here, he says, he will always show me love. Always. 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 Not sometime. Everything about God is love. He will defend you. He will chastise you. He will talk to you sternly and say, listen now, you messed up here, but here's what you do to fix it. If what you're hearing is, you know, you mess up, I mean, I'll help you, you know. Or, you know, say, you have to go repent a hundred times to this, you know. That is not God. It is the enemy that brings condemnation. In the book of Romans, it says, no, there is therefore no, no, now it's a very interesting word, you know. It means at this present time, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And how we go? For those who are called according to his glory. So it is not the, 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 the Holy Spirit don't bring condemnation. He brings conviction. He tell you where you slip up, where you went wrong, and how to fix it. The enemy only tell you where you slip up and him keep beating you over the head with that. So bring that under subjection, under the blood of Jesus, because it exalts in itself against the knowledge of God. So David goes on to say, I am surrounded by these fierce and brutal men. They are like lions just waiting to tear me to sheds. Why must I continue to live among these seething terrorists, breathing out their angry threats and insults against me? Now, listen, are you living in a community that is violent? That means you are surrounded by fierce and brutal men. Ask God why you must continue to live among these seething terrorists. Be exalted, God. Declare this over your community. Be exalted, God, as you soar throughout the heavens over this community. May your shining glory be seen in the sky. Let it be seen high above the earth, for they have set a trap for me. Now to look at the next sentence. In verse 6, it says, frantic fear has me overwhelmed. Let's look in the King James Version and see what he says. He says, my soul is bowed down. Because they have digged a pit for me in the midst of whereof they have fallen themselves. But I want you to look at that confession. He's, you see, I say it all the time. The issue is not feeling fearful. The issue is coming into agreement with the spirit of fear. So David is confessing to God, look, <laughs> my soul is bowed down within me. I am trying to find it. 
he says, frantic fear has me overwhelmed. But then he says, but look, look at what's happening here. The very trap they have set for me have sprung shut upon themselves instead of me. <gasps> because you see, my father sent a father's help. Sought them out. I never have to lift a finger. My heart, oh God, is quiet and confident. So he has moved from frantic fear and panic overwhelming him to getting himself to a place where, let me look at what God is doing. And then he sees all the very trap that has been set for me. They have sprung it upon themselves. And then he says, my heart, oh God, is quiet and confident. Now I can sing with passion your wonderful praises. But what does Psalm, um, what does scriptures tell us about praising and thanks? In Philippians 4 verse 8, with everything, every situation, you give thanks. In prayer, you pray to God. Let your supplications be known in thanksgiving, in supplication, in prayer. Let your request be known to God. So you thank him even when you're feeling the fear. You say, God, I'm afraid in a but. I'm giving you all the glory. I'm giving you all the glory because you are God and I trust you. My very spirit trusts you. It's not no superficial trust. I trust you with everything inside of me. And he speaks to his soul now. He says, awake my soul with the music of his splendor song. Arise my soul and sing his praises. And he says he'll be singing his praises to wake on the dawn. Greeting the daybreak with his songs of praise. You ever wake up and shout a hallelujah? That's the first thing that come out of your mouth. You ever wake up and you go, Cha Holy Spirit, you're the boss. I remember once I woke up laughing. And I remembered in the dream, I was sitting with the Holy Spirit and we were joking around. I can't remember what the joke was, but I woke up laughing. I woke up laughing. I asked myself, what may I laugh about? But then I remembered I was actually chatting with the Holy Spirit in my dream and, and it wasn't a, he had any mission for me to do. I remember my prayer that night because I went to bed feeling a little overwhelmed and stressed. And I said, boy, Holy Spirit, I need a hug up in a car. You say, you give your beloved sweet sleep. And I didn't finish the sentence. I was asleep and it came to me in my dreams and he was just joking around and chatting with me. And, you know, I woke up laughing. So, my worship, because laughter is also a form of worship, you know. I My worship greeted the dawn because I was just enjoying the presence of the Holy Spirit. And he continues to say, wherever I go, I will thank you, my God. Among all the nations, they will hear my praise songs to you. Your love is so extravagant, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness so astonishing, it stretches to the sky. Lord, be exalted as you soar through the heavens. May your shining glory be shown in the skies. Let it be seen high and above all the earth. Amen. 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 Now, I forgot to put the the psalm on the screen but it is psalm 57 i hope you enjoyed this monday night in the psalms we'll be doing a lot of our streams pre-recorded until the end of the year we're having some technical difficulties on the provider's side but we're also in preparation for an upcoming event which i will show you that video right now and then I come back and we pray.
So, Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement in your word. Thank you, Lord, that our soul, our very soul, our very spirit can trust in you. Thank you, Lord, we can hide under your wings until calamities pass us, Lord. Thank you for the reassurance of your Holy Spirit and his presence in us and among us. Father, to you be all glory, honor, and praise. Lord, I pray that this teaching, this expounding upon this psalm will bring encouragement to those who listen to it, to those who watch it, to those who are facing calamities at this time. Be exalted, O Lord. Be exalted. Let your glory be seen in the heavens. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Amen. Have a wonderful evening. Join me tomorrow for meds in the morning and in the afternoon for under my tree as we wrap up the final of the journey series. Have a wonderful evening.